we are here with what people might consider the most evil and dangerous black metal band playing this year's Wacken Festival. And, uh, well, please introduce yourself. God. I'm the bass player king. Yeah. Gorgoroth, of course. And uh, Gorgoroth have planned to do a very special show in Wacken and King might explain what it's all about. Uh, what we're doing is basically setting up the entire show from we did in Krakow in 2004. Uh, with crucified models, you know, fire, blood, sheep heads, barbed wire, yeah, basically everything. And we are going to do that in a in a, a festival context. And it's you know because it's a festival, it's have uh, changeovers and everything. So it's. It's very well organized right now. I feel confident that we are able to, to set up a show worthy the art we are actually trying to create, you know, like the environments for, for uh, our main agenda and uh, the music we present. And that, so, yeah, so uh, hopefully it will be a successful show that we are able to, to present our art in the best possible way. A lot of people might think what you're doing is very offensive. What is the meaning behind all the things you put on stage? Um, <laughs> well, there's a lot of different meanings with it, but uh, art should never be explained. It should be experienced. What kind of experience do you promise the people watching the show? Uh, that will be an individual experience, of course. So. If there's uh, 50,000, then there's 50,000 different experiences as well. So it's, uh, it depends on the audience. The show in Krakow has just been released by uh, a company in Poland. Uh, is that something the band has approved of? Uh, to be quite honest, we, we didn't get, uh, get, get to mix or take control over the tapes at all. And uh, the result of, uh, of that DVD is, is uh, nothing we are very, you know, it's not representing Gorgoth in 2008, it's more of a histor historical document. It was Gorgoth in 2004 presented in a way which could have been done better, you know. Uh, on the other hand, it's, it's a historical document and it's, it lives for its own, it's not representing us uh, in the present, it's just a historical document. Um, as far as I remember, you said after the Krakow show as well that you think it wasn't the best show you've ever done. Uh, no, we played poorly and uh, yeah, it's, uh, we should have recorded a gig bef the day before, which was a very good gig actually, so, but uh, of course not the same scenery, so, uh, uh, also the, the re Due to all the cameras, equipment, and all this, you get the distance to the audience, so it doesn't get as personal and intense as it usually would be. So it's uh, the energy was not there. But uh, I, are you in a good shape at the moment? I don't know. Hopefully, <laughs> um, there has been recent troubles with the band because you split with a former member. And there has also been a release from the former member. How um, is your position on that? Uh, I've noticed it's some sort of confusion still about like being two Gorgos or whatever, but it's not two Gorgos, it's one Gorgos and that's me and Gal. We kicked out Infernus uh, of reason, very understandable for us. And uh, to be quite honest, it's, it's, it's no big change actually kicking him out. It's, uh, I've been the driving force musically, and uh, Gal has done everything lyrically and uh, you know vocal lines and everything. So we actually worked as a duo for a decade anyway. We just had a, gu a guitar player, uh, which lacked more and more interest in the band and actually poured water on the fire we were actually creating. It, it, it didn't ma maintain, maintain the, the, the same quality longer as well. He wasn't interested in playing guitar or taking part of anything. That's why we, we had to, to, uh, to fire him. Uh, and uh, right now we, we, we agreed upon doing a live album called uh, Live in Grigholm. Uh, we signed a contract with Regain Records as a three piece. 
and then we informed Regain that uh, now it's now we are going to kick Inference out of the band. And Regain at that point were totally fine with that because they knew that I, me and Gal was actually doing everything anyway. So they were totally fine with it. Uh, but we we went to a, uh, a South American tour and. We, we were going on a new European tour and it was lots of things happening so we were getting lack of time actually really doing the album and therefore they present a new contract for me and Gaul saying okay you have if you do this album we'll you know do it beneficial for you to, to actually do that album so we created a new contract so we actually signed two contracts for that album and then they decided afterwards to do, to to side with uh, with Inference and we went into the, into the studio as a three-piece, uh, playing 13 songs. Uh, basically the set we did on the, these European tours. And uh, that's what we, what we did. Gaul went into the studio, he, was, he had a cold, so he just did you know, some crap vocals just to give us signs where to change, you know, just, just to help, help vocals in the studio. He was uh, going to do that later because he, he, he had a cold, right? But they took the tapes and they removed five tracks which uh, me and Gol had created, presented as, as inference, removed my bass tracks, mixed it without uh, the knowledge of me and Gol. And uh, of course, uh, they, act, yeah, and they, they left one of my Force of Saints and Storms is still on there. And uh, that, that's a song I made. So. In total, it's like you're not allowed to sell this DVD, this CD. You know, it's uh, it's possible for, uh, impossible for you to, to sell this DVD, no, this CD, and uh, and still they they didn't listen to us, and we took them to court, and uh, the, we had to do it in Sweden because of Regain being a Swedish label, and the judges they parted, you know, they sided with us, and right now they're not, you know. Uh, allowed to sell the sell the CD, and if they're continuing to sell it, it's going to be large fines to them. We'll sue them for all the money that they have, basically, because I was interested in money, but I will punish them as hard. I will take everything from them and uh, leave them in ruins and in their own filth, basically, uh, because they are a record label, not trustworthy. There's no honor in them, and they have uh, nothing to offer to this world, basically. They they need to be erased. When it comes to black metal and Gorgoroth, you will probably have a lot of people watching you when you're going to play in Wacken that have never had contact to black metal or Gorgoroth. What does that mean to you and what should black metal mean? Oh, uh, difficult question, especially what does black metal mean, but uh, uh, it's always good to get new new people in the audience. It's uh, because Gogat is a band, uh, di uh, in, as a studio band, it, it's kind of different to what we are live. So it's two different experiences. So um, yeah, we probably will catch some new souls, but um, yeah, I just hope to do a good show, and that's basically it. It's uh, if it's here or anywhere else, it doesn't matter. So. There's always new people in the audience, wherever we go anyway, so... It's just that it's bigger here, and more of them, so... And same question to you, what does Gorgoroth and black metal mean? Uh, Gorgoroth is, for me, is a satanic black metal band. Uh, it's, uh, it has an agenda, it's representing lots of, lots of views on nature, morale, uh, God within nature, God within in man, uh, the denial of universal truth, the embracing of chaos, and uh, we, uh, we we present that in the most purest form, uh, you know, uh, to our beliefs. Not anyone else. It's like an individual path we are going for ourselves. What other people mean or have an opinion about is is uh, not of concern for us because we represent what we 
what needs to be presented for ourselves, you know. And uh, yeah, that's what Gorgoth and Black Metal represents for me. Does it mean something special to you to play the Wacken Festival, which is the biggest metal festival in the world? Um, no, basically not. It's 10 years since last time we played there, though, so it's um, um, it's interesting to see how much bigger it is now than it was in '98. Uh, so um, yeah, and uh, yeah. surprisingly, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, people there. So, but uh, we'll see. And for you, I mean, you've been here last year with Sag. It's a very different, different experience, of course. Uh, Sag is a, you know, much, much, uh, not as big band and all that kind of thing. So the environment and the production things are working very differently now because uh, the production is much bigger and the planning for it has been, you know, we have, we have used probably six months just preparing for for all details uh, for this show. So. It's very important for us to, to present ourselves in a correct manner because we are not. Uh, we we cannot present ourselves in this way each each night, of course, because this is the biggest festival for metal in the world, and of course we have uh, more money to, to do a production that is suitable for our art, and that's what we are going to do now. Thank you for the interview. You're welcome. You're welcome.